Hi, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm talking about the atom in a series of videos, and it may seem unique to some of you to uh, see a section on electromagnetic radiation pop up, but it's so important to understand light because light is used, electromagnetic radiation is not only used to study matter, but we find that the mathematical models of electromagnetic radiation can actually help us understand very, very small particles like an electron. So it's a really critical little interlude to understanding the atom. Um, now, electromagnetic radiation uh, is typically thought of as a wave. Um, so we're going to look at the fact that light has both a wave nature and light has a particle-like nature. And that duality laid a critical foundation to understanding the structure of the atom. So let's first look at the wave nature of light. So you may have seen this type of a diagram where you have a crest and then you have a trough and as you go from one to the other, you define the wavelength of light. Wavelengths will typically be measured in meters, but we're going to find that for a lot of the work we're going to be doing, nanometers is also quite important. Uh, the speed of light in a vacuum uh, is what we will be using, the speed of light, and this one, the 3.8 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, is often provided in a list of, con, uh, of constants. The next one, however, isn't. So if you like using this one, which I personally do, then you want to memorize this because it's typically not given on most tests in their list of constants. Now, you don't really have to memorize because hopefully by now, converting from a base to a prefix and metric is second nature to you. So there's a lot of options there. All right, so this is our, our, our wavelength. It's going to be measured in meters. And um, we're not, we don't going to do a lot in science and chemistry with the amplitude at this level. But what we are going to do is the frequency. So what I want you to do is imagine, if you could, that you are looking at, so this is your eyeball, really it's going to be more likely a detector, but I'm trying to give you a, just a thought experiment. So your, um, your eyeball is sitting here and what you want to do is you're going to start a stopwatch, okay, so you're going to do a stopwatch and you're going to watch the time, and in that time you're going to figure out how many of these waves pass your eyeball in a given amount of time. So the analogy might be if you're sitting on a corner, um, the frequency of cars, you could set your stopwatch and say, I'm gonna see how many cars are going to pass by in 10 seconds. So you would be measuring cars per second. In this case, we are measuring cycles per second. And often, we just ignore the cycles and we're going to do frequency okay, as seconds to the minus one. So we have that wavelength that I mentioned. That's given the Greek letter in chemistry of lambda. And I've already mentioned how we measure that. Frequency in chemistry is given the Greek letter nu. Now, if you're also in physics, they use F. Um, we use new. I guess we just like those fancier Greek letters. But um, anyway, cycles per second, or more often, seconds to the minus one. And you can use S for seconds. Now, if it were minutes, you've got to be careful because you can't use M for minutes because that's meters. Okay, but S for seconds is just fine. Okay, now the other thing we want to learn is that any visible light between 700 nanometers and 400 nanometers is the visible range. Um, and hopefully you will have time to study that um, at a basic level. You should usually at least get to do visible spectroscopy, if not uh, uh, ultraviolet.
Okay, now, um, if the visible range, often the acronym Roy G. Biv is used. You have red at the 700, so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet at the 400 end. Okay, now not all light or electromagnetic radiation is visible. Okay, so <clears throat> um, that's what you often think of when you talk about light is you think about visible light because that's what our eyes see. Okay, so, but the visible range is actually just a small portion. So just higher energy, so energy is going this way. So this would be higher energy, and this would be lower energy over here, low energy. Um, I don't like to use high and low with wavelength because it's a uh, length. So this would be a shorter, right? The 400 nanometer is the shorter wavelength end. And down here, this is the longer wavelength end of the electromagnetic spectrum. So we have visible and then ultraviolet above the violet. You have ultraviolet. Below the red, you have infrared. And then we have x-rays. And we have gamma radiation, the highest. Um, all of these are dangerous in various degrees. Just below IR, you have microwaves, like we cook with. And down here, you're going to have um, radio waves, television, and so forth. I'm not going to divide that further. Okay. All right. Well, well, what about frequency? So let's go back to our counting cars example. Um, if, if these cars are bumper to bumper, does it make sense to you that if you have a shorter car like my Mini Cooper, you're going to see a lot of cars go by? in um, 10 minutes. And so the shorter wavelength actually has the higher frequency. And if you have, you know, long like uh, limos, those are, you're not going to have as many go by. So that would be going towards the lower frequency end. So what we see is that as you the energy of a wavelength is increased. We have an increased higher frequency and a shorter wavelength. So we have a direct proportionality and an inverse proportionality. So if we want the higher frequency, we want to be considering the shorter wavelength representation. And those have an inverse relationship to one another. Um, and before I leave this slide, I don't want to forget, uh, I, I don't like tricks that bypass understanding, but I love mnemonic devices that help us memorize. And so my friend shared this with me. Yay, Alicia Marusik, learned so much from you. Red Martians, radio, microwave, invade, infrared, Roy G. Biv, using ultraviolet, x-ray, gizmos. So red Martians invade Roy G. Biv using x-ray gizmos can give you this order. Okay, so um, in my next video, I'll be spending a little bit more time talking about the particle nature of electromagnetic radiation. I hope you can join me. Until then, for all my kiddos, this is signing off.